welcome to the Discipleship for the Decades podcast. I am Jeremy, one of our hosts, joined by... Karis Kemp, as well as Wayne Bennett today. Our special guest, Wayne, as promised from our last episode. Um, and if you missed the last episode, wonderful conversation with Margie Persons around crafting, quilting, all things creative arts. Yeah. Um, so we're going from the indoor scene of that kind of world to the outdoor scene uh, of hiking, being out on the trail. Um, that's something that all three of us um, are well-versed in and uh, enjoy doing. So I wanted to start by saying, okay, what was our first kind of uh, introduction to the outdoors, to hiking and how you kind of got sold on it? Um, so I'll go first. Um, all through college, I worked at a summer camp for boys, and we would take them on overnight backpacking trips. So I had never really done much of it. I went to Appalachian State. You would think I spent tons of time hiking at Appalachian, but never did much backpacking until I got onto the scene uh, at the summer camp. And I did four straight years of taking eight and nine-year-olds. Now it looks crazy that they let some college kids take eight and nine-year-olds backpacking. Um, saw many a bear uh, while we were up there. This was in the Asheville area. Um, it's not uncommon to see them up there, but... Um, so that really solidified my love. I got some really great, we were able to get some cool discounts at some of the local hiking stores in Black Mountain. So I got some good gear um, that's really kind of sold me on moving forward. So awesome. that's where I started. How you about started you? there. Yeah. I um, mentioned in a sermon, right, my family, my parents loved to backpack. They would go on big um, backpack trips without the kids. And then finally, when we were old enough to hike, which is probably... I think my youngest backpack trip, I was probably five years old when I first went backpacking, and we would go in the Sierras, and um, my brother, I remember my dad would say, yeah, we'd pack this tiny little backpack for them with just a toothbrush and their socks and underwear and a, and a sleeping bag, and that's all you'd have to carry, and so really from a young age, that became just normative, and remember a lot of trips of uh, probably more complaining and whining and feeling like the trail went on forever, which probably, it was probably a mile, but my poor parents who probably put up with a lot of, um, I don't know, consternation before it became transformative and Mm life-giving. And really, I think my older brother and I took to it together and we would start backpacking with friends of ours in California in the Sierras. And we would just get high school friends and say, hey, let's go hit this trail for three days. And we'd put all the food together and we'd get get it going. And so he and I would lead some, we called them death hikes. And uh, really, my brother was, was the leading to death hike part of it. I was along for the ride. and uh, But soon it just became part of our family culture. So, Well, and I don't think we have any secrets here on the podcast, mm-hmm. and I don't think this is a secret, but you did meet your husband oh, and on I the did. trail as well, right? I met oh, Randy wow. on a backpack trip. Yes. That so is he, cool. Yeah. We met on a backpack trip, and after three days of being, you know, what happens after three days in the backcountry, you get a little stinky, you're not mm-hmm. looking your best, you, you don't, your lipstick is just not quite there, right? So, no, we had a great time getting to know each other on the trail, and just that's still part of our story is whenever we hit the trail together, that's that's a, a mutual love we have. So. That's awesome. Yeah. How did you get started, Wayne? How did I get started? Well, it was great to hear that story. By the way, I really appreciate uh, you inviting me here today and the oh, opportunity to yeah. talk about uh, one of my great loves uh, in life outside of my wife. I get that in there. There you you go. go. But started at a very early age. Uh, uh, My mother and father were both uh, outdoors type people, especially my mother. And she was a teacher, so she had the summers off. So Mm -hmm. she took us a lot of different places. Every summer we would visit uh, her parents outside of Chicago, and we'd go up to an aunt and uncle's place in Michigan in the Mm -hmm. backwoods. And we'd go out in the morning and pick blueberries, and then we'd go out for the day hiking here, you know, there, everywhere, and just developed an incredible love for the outdoors at that early age. So I can appreciate what you were saying, Karis, as far as getting started at that age. You don't really appreciate it fully, but it does start to get inculcated in you and you do reach a point, as you were saying, where it's transformative, absolutely. I mean, one of my big things uh, now on the trail is if I'm anywhere where I see a family out uh, hiking 
you know, I always stop and I uh, commend them for having their children with them and getting them started at an early age because I just think uh, that is so much these days in terms of their development, young people's development. You know, I saw something that said uh, uh, social network. Well, we had social network when I was a kid. It was called the outdoors. Uh -huh. You know, you got outdoors and you played with kids in the neighborhood and you did things outdoors. I always say uh, when I was young, punishment was go to I'm your inside. room. Go to your room. <laughs> go to your room because you had nothing to do. You spent your day outdoors. And I think uh, as you develop over time, you get more and more of an appreciation. And then uh, started uh, hiking and started meeting my brothers down in the Smokies mm -hmm. and spending a week with them every year. Did that for close to 40 years. Mm -hmm. It's kind of broken down the last few years. But if you don't mind, I'd like to read something from a uh, photo album I put together uh, probably about 15 years ago with photos of my brothers and I. And by the way, I have four brothers. My older brother has passed, but at the time there were five of us, okay? And it kind of speaks to how I feel about the outdoors and that experience. Yeah. Okay. And it's called the Great Smoky Mountain Tradition because that's where we went uh, every year. Whenever I talk about the Smokies, I always start by telling folks there is no place I'd rather be. There is a feeling of tranquility that reaches into your soul when you first arrive in the park. A feeling of anticipation also settles in as you look forward to hiking in the mountains along the streams or out to the falls. The panoramic views from the jump off Charlie's Bunyan, Newfound Gap, or Mount Cameron never grow old. Ending a day with the dip in the sinks and then a meal back at camp can't be beat. What really makes the park special, though, is sharing the experience with family and friends. I hope this album helps bring back those memories as you wait for the next gathering. Mm -hmm. And I really feel that way. In fact, uh, I also started my son very early hiking and going down to the Smokies with us and my brothers. And he has developed such an incredible love of the outdoors. And we still go camping and hiking up at Lake Norman State Park, okay, mm -hmm. because he still has that incredible love for the outdoors. And I think when that gets instilled in a young person, it stays with them, okay? Mm -hmm. yep. And the other thing is uh, I've never felt closer to God than when I'm uh, outdoors in nature. I mean, it's, you just think to yourself, this is God's creation. Mm -hmm. I mean, because when you're sitting here or you're home or whatever, you're not sitting in God's creation. That's all man-made. You're surrounded by man-made. You get out in nature and away from all that, the solitude, I mean, you just can't help but feel closer to God. As a uh, Jan and I were talking about that earlier. She was talking about how she walks on the greenway mm -hmm. and she sees the bikers zipping by mm -hmm. and the runners running by and she you know, her heart just is a little sad because she said, they're all missing it. They're all head mm -hmm. down, going fast. And mm -hmm. she takes a nice slow walk on the greenway and just said, the other day I was just looking at all the different shapes of the leaves. And mm -hmm. to your point, to be in that environment and to take it in, uh, you can tunnel through it quickly or you can really take it mm -hmm. in. You sound like a taker in her. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting, too, because uh, there was a movie a few years back, uh, The War Room. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but yep. um, there's a, a woman who's having difficulties with her husband, and she winds up working with an elderly lady who's selling her home. Well, it turns out the elderly lady has a closet in her home, it's called The War Room, where she goes in and prays, okay, and she has things on the wall and so on. But the whole idea is a sanctuary, a place of solitude, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel when I get out in nature. It is like a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And you're not surrounded by all the uh, man-made stuff and the trappings of everyday life. You don't have cell phones, you know. You just... There's no cell phone signal in most of these places. Yeah, so. that's yeah. absolutely yeah. right. I used to tell my people at work, uh, I'm going to be down in the Smokies for a week. Uh, you know, forget about reaching me yep. unless you can... Uh, get a ranger somewhere and, <laughs> you know, start helicopters out in the park. No, it's just great being away from all that. And I think that's 
part of what uh, brings you closer to God, okay? You don't have all the distractions. Mm -hmm. Well, and if you're hiking in the mountains, you're physically closer to God, right? Amen. uh, Elevation mm -hmm. gain. Yeah, elevation gain. I was curious, Wayne, about... uh, Oftentimes when I would lead wilderness trips, we talked about how there's a vulnerability that grows when you are in the mountains. So Mm -hmm. it's beautiful. I'm sure you've had a day where it was pouring rain and there was probably no desire, right? I Just give me a warm hut and a fire. That's what I want right now. But how does God even use that kind of stuff in your outdoor experience to bring you closer? Yeah. Um, this is off I script. Apologize. I didn't prepare you for that question. No, that's all right. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure my phone didn't ring. Um, well, it's interesting because uh, I've experienced that a number of times, and I think what happens when you have that kind of adversity thrown at you, you know, you tend to get closer to the folks you're out there with. You 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 work together, okay? Mm-hmm. Um but I also look at it as, well, that's part of nature, okay? And it's something that you will never escape, no matter how much you plan ahead and so on. Uh, you know, there's always going to be some adversity, and you have to, uh, you know, adapt and, uh, you know, just roll with the punches, so to speak. But I do think you're right, Karis. I'm in the early stages of, of thinking through my next sermon, which is on authenticity. Mm-hmm. And I think our authentic selves do come out most, probably greatest in times of adversity. And yeah, if you yeah get on the trail and let it start to pour down rain uh, nonstop and you're soaking mm-hmm. wet and you've got nowhere to go because you're, you know, halfway through a, a trip or, you know, turning back to the car is not an option, right? Like True colors can show up. Exactly. Well, yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And we actually uh, had that experience. Uh, in fact, I'm going to okay. uh, show you this uh, hiking pole. I don't use it, though. It's more a memento. I actually use trekking poles. But this is from one of the Bethel Men's Hikes. It's the Ash, It's an Ash County tobacco stick, 2015 Bethel Men's Hike, Mount Rogers, Virginia. And a fellow by the name of Jack Shaw, who is one of our car- covenant partners here at Bethel, actually made these up for the two dozen or so folks that were on this uh, hike. Mm -hmm. But you talk about adversity. The first night out, we're up on the top of Mount Rogers, actually not at the very top because that's all wooded up there, but we're in an open area. There was a shelter there, okay, but only one person uh, stayed in the shelter. The rest of us pitched all our tents, and it stormed that night, and it just downpour, downpour, downpour. And you got up in the morning, you had to pack up. Everything was soaking wet. You were drenched and so on. And yeah, it it is discouraging. I'll have to be honest. We actually, uh, instead of finishing the hike, uh, we turned back, okay? <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, yeah. so yeah, but... Uh, it was just uh, interesting that in the face of that kind of adversity, you know, we kind of chickened out. <laughs> you know? well, sometimes and, that's wisdom, right? Yes, <laughs> yes wisdom. Go, oh. By the way, as uh, I think anybody listening to this podcast will know this fellow, the one fellow that slept in the shelter was Bill Kane. No. Oh, wow. And I'm going to make sure he watches this podcast. <laughs> yep. uh-huh. You should. Calling you out, Bill. <laughs> yeah. um, well, and so you talk about all these different folks, right? The Bill Canes, um, mm-hmm. someone who uh, you've done a lot of hikes with, Vern and mm-hmm. uh, Dodd and Mark Ariel. That fellowship, the camaraderie, what is it about that being on the trail with folks like that that mm-hmm. are so... Um, well, I what I uh, say to people is you're familiar with the expression, walk a mile in my shoes. There's also the counter to that, walk a mile in their shoes. Mm-hmm. I think when you get out, I don't think, I know when you get out on the trail and you walk a few miles with somebody, you feel like you're walking in their shoes. The bond you develop, the camaraderie de- you develop, it's just incredible. And some of the strongest bonds I've developed with people in my life are people that I've spent time with out on the trail and really gotten to know them. Mm -hmm. How often in life do you get an opportunity to spend time with people and really interact with them? And when you're on the trail, you're talking for the most part one-on-one or one-on-two or whatever and have a dialogue that 
you know, it's just so personal, okay? Yep. No distractions, all right? Yep. So I think you really develop friendship, bonding that you can't develop anywhere else in life. And you just feel so close to them. And if, and with the Bethel Men's Hike and with the Men's Retreat, where we also hike, you're hiking with a group of Christian men, okay? So you have that in common and you can relate. And as somebody uh, said to me at, uh, recently, who uh, was out hiking with Bill Kane, it's almost like a spiritual experience because you hike with a group of Christian men, okay? You just, you can relate to them and you have so much in common, okay? Faith wise and otherwise and, and common values, core values and so on. Well, in shared experience, I think on the trail, I don't know about you, but um, I have so many God sightings that yes. you can share in together and you feel like, whoa, it was so good that this river appeared when it did mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. that um, we had this moment of pause in the weather, whatever that God mm -hmm. moment was. Mm -hmm. Do you have one that comes to mind that you just think that because we shared this experience, mm -hmm. it drew the group closer? Mm -hmm. Well, two people that I uh, backpack frequently with are uh, former pastor here, Bill Kane, and a former pastor from down in Huntersville in Florida, Vern Dodd, okay? And it's interesting you talk about the God sightings because that's a term that often gets used when we're out uh, backpacking, God sightings, and just some of the things we experience. When you get up, uh, you, you climb up to the top of a mountain, okay, you get up in the dark and you hike uh, for an hour in the dark to get up to the top of a mountain and the sun rises and the fog and the clouds are down in the valleys and you look out at that. If you can't experience that and feel that that is truly a God sighting, a moment <laughs> that was put there in time for you to experience. And we were on the top of that mountain, just the three of us looking out, and you say to yourself, nobody else is seeing what we're seeing right now. Nobody else is experiencing this. You truly feel like you're closer to God there. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what God created, okay? Truly a uh, sighting, though, and we often have God sightings uh, when we're out backpacking. Did you um, have any moments with your young boys on the trail where you're, there was a moment of desperation, but you feel like God kind of provided at the right time? Yeah, so it's funny. We just, um, I don't know, how long ago was it? that Not this last men's hike, but the one before we were in the mountains, and... Um, came across a bear. Panther Town Valley. Panther Town mm -hmm. Valley. Mm -hmm. um, about this and place. this was it. That, so that was interesting. Uh, it ended up uh, later on coming back that night out of the water in the dark while three of us are sitting around the fire. And it just like, I see its light, its eyes glowing in the light of the fire. And, and here it is and 20 feet from us. But um, on when we were with the young kids, I, uh, we would often hike, um, where we were on trails where it was, uh, valleys on both sides. So it went, I mean, steep hills. Um, and so I was walking along in the middle of the pack and I hear rustling on one side and then I heard rustling on the other side and I look to the left and I see two cubs mm -hmm. and oh. the rustling on the right was a much louder rustle. Oh boy. So you know you don't get between a mom and the cubs, right? So um, I told the kids in front of me, I said, "Y'all continue on to where we're hiking. The rest of you need to mm -hmm. we need to go back as within eyesight, but like y'all need to." Mm -hmm. um, so that was a very mm -hmm. um, tense moment yeah. until mom finally crossed over and got with the cubs, and they went on down the hill, and then we continued. But I was just like, "God, okay, these are not my eight and nine year olds." Yeah, like there's mo like three quarters of the counselors were up ahead so there was only a couple of us left with a group of kids i'm like okay god like you just gotta mm -hmm. keep this bear from charging at us um but yeah i mean it's something about being in situations like the counselors grow a lot closer right that we end up finding ways to encourage ourselves through some of that mm -hmm. adversity um i don't know you've been much bigger places out west than i've been on the east coast but 
I'm sure there's been some You know, times. one of the coolest God sightings I saw and in, kind of indirectly involved a bear um, was back when I was guiding in the Porcupine Mountains in uh, Upper Peninsula of Michigan, mm-hmm. Porky's. And there were lots of bears up there. And there were certain areas where we would travel through that we knew we just needed to alert people of here's how we are going to mm-hmm. rig mm-hmm. our food at night. Mm-hmm. And so I was giving the bear talk to this group of gals. It was all girls on this trip. And we're talking about... And these were incoming freshmen to Wheaton. This was their kind of their freshman orientation trip. So I'm sitting there giving the bear talk, and we hadn't seen anybody in days. But when we get to the Porkies, we start to see some people. So there's a couple, and all of the students are facing me, and there's this couple who's kind of watching us. And I Mm -hmm. thought, maybe they're just interested in what I have to say about the bears, so I'll just let them (laughs) hang there. Mm -hmm. So they're watching, and they're kind of looking at our group. And we would do a leader of the day. So the girl who was leader of the day had led our group truly 15 miles. We were way off course. We weren't even supposed to be where we were that night because we had struggled to get to places. So when you're route planning, um, you build in these these other possibilities. So we were not where we were supposed to be camping. but And it was her birthday. Mm-hmm. And she was super homesick. So there was oh multifaceted. But at this moment, the sun was setting. It was beautiful. And this couple who is hanging out behind our group happened to be her brother and his wife who were out for a little backpack trip of their own. And so Andrea looks at this couple and is like, what? And we, again, haven't seen people for days. And God unites this homesick freshman girl with her brother right around the time of her birth, believe it or not, on her birthday. Wow. At this campsite, and, you know, they went on their way, and we didn't see people again. And that was one of those, like, jaw-dropping, wow, okay, Lord. That's incredible. That's nuts. Yeah. And there's moments like that, I think, that happen on trails where um, that was certainly, I think, if anything, it built my faith as a leader of, Lord, you have stories going on here mm-hmm. that we have no, we wow. can't even fathom that you've aligned and and how that works out. And if I can trust you on a trip like this, can I trust you in life that you're going to align certain moments the way that you will, which really don't involve us at all. So, well, and that's what I was going to say, right? The bonds you make on the trail often lead to who you find yourself encouraging off the trail too, right? Absolutely. Or if you have some kind of issue, somebody that I've been on the trail with, I know I can immediately go to because of the – authenticity factor, Mm -hmm. right? Getting to know people through the hiking, I go, I can call so-and-so and and they, anybody I've hiked, especially here at Bethel, anyone I've hiked with, I could call and they would give me the shirt off their back, right? That's just the type of people that they are. But you Mm -hmm. come to find that because of the really cool stories um, of, Mm -hmm. you know, being on the trail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you've suffered or you've had somebody tend your blistered foot, and mm-hmm. you know, man, I am really struggling, but Wayne came along and helped me out, right? There is. There's a trust that's well, built. That's, that's yeah. absolutely true. And I just want to mention, and I'll go back to the Bethel Men's Hike and the uh, Bethel Men's Retreat. Now, by the way, these are guy things, but at the same time, any uh, wives Applicable or girlfriends or whatever that are... Uh, listening to the podcast or watching the podcast, encourage your man to get out and participate in these groups because you do develop the friendships and bonds. And I will say with the men's retreat, that is coming up this October, the 1st to the 3rd, and Mark Ariel is taking a lead on that as he has for a number of years. And I've got to tell you, Mark does such an incredible job and he also is the guy that organizes these Bethel men's hikes. And by the way, it's not only Bethel folks. If you've got friends, and that often is the case at the uh, men's retreat or the men's hikes, invite them, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's generally the type of people that participate in those that are the type of people that you will develop the bonds and friendships and the go-to. So I encourage any of the men 
to participate in the men's retreat this year. Which October is a perfect wrap-up for this podcast of say. giving us something exciting to look forward to. And ladies who are hikers out there, maybe we should get our women's version of this going. Yeah. Let's Absolutely. talk. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Well, and when you look at our discipleship questions, which we try to weave in here, right, there's so many of these that come out of the shared fellowship, whether it's men's retreats, hikes, all kinds of ladies' things. I know we talk about guy stuff, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Women, we hear you. We'll have stuff for you, too. Um, and it's not just going to be whatever. Mm -hmm. so. I'm going to get Nanette out there with me sometime. Nanette, absolutely. By the way, my wife walks every morning in Jatan Park, and she gets out there early. She likes to get out there early because it's cooler, mm -hmm. and she's often the only person in the park, and she calls that her time with God, okay, mm -hmm. because she talks to God uh, when she's out in the park. I mean, she feels like she's out in nature, and she is, yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for jamming on us a little bit with uh, hiking and outdoors. And thanks, Wayne, for coming and absolutely. sharing some stories. Yeah, if I you enjoyed uh, it. ever find yourself in some kind of rut, yeah, spend some time away from technology, get outside, because, um, yeah, it's always a good way to recharge those batteries. Amen. So... Join us next time on our Discipleship for the Decades podcast. We'll see you guys. Bye.